Today I want to look at a Rapsodo bullpen report, take a look at the data, what the data means, and what they mean for this specific pitcher. So today we're going to look at Hunter's Rapsodo numbers. Hunter's 16-year-old right-hand pitcher. The first thing I look at is just basic types of pitches he throws, the different velocities. So just to note, this is one piece of the puzzle. This is not looking at any video of the player, not knowing any backstory, mechanics. This is strictly numbers. He threw one bullpen on my Rapsodo, it was 20 pitches. So even the numbers themselves and the data is limited. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. But this is generally what I look at when I'm looking at Rapsodo numbers, what I look at first, and go from there. So the first thing to look at is the types of pitches thrown and the velocities. Very simple. So you see fastball 69, which is average velo, maxed out at 70. The two seam, same velocity as the four seam. We'll talk about that more later. And then a change up was around averaged 66.7, maxed out at 69. So not too much of separation from his fastball. After looking at the velocities of the different pitches, I want to look at how the pitches move. This is the movement break plot. So just to give you an idea how this works, this middle middle point, the zero zero point, that represents a pitch that doesn't move at all because of spin. So if there if the pitch is a gyro slider, if it has a bullet spin to it, it's only going to move because of gravity. That spin on the ball, that gyro spin, is not going to contribute to any movement. It's just going to sink naturally because of gravity. Now let's say there was a right-handed over-the-top fastball that had 20 inches of vertical break and let's say five inches of horizontal break. So it's breaking 20 more inches vertically up than that gyro slider, which is just falling to gravity. So it's not actually breaking up, but in comparison to the gyro slider, it's going to be a difference of 20 inches. And same thing with horizontal break. It's going to run five inches horizontally as opposed to the gyro slider, which movement-wise, because of spin, is not moving at all. It's only moving because of gravity. If this zero zero point is a gyro slider where the spin isn't affecting the movement, then anything above this is going to be a fastball with positive vertical break. Anything below this line, the zero zero line, is going to be a breaking ball with downward vertical break. A right-handed pitcher fastballs will typically plot to the right of this line, and that's going to represent the run, while anything to the left of this line is going to represent inward break. A lefty, just the opposite. Lefty's fastballs are typically going to plot in this area to the left of the downward line, and his stuff breaking in is going to plot to the right of it. So now Hunter's pitches. Let's take a look at the fastballs first. We have this cluster of red is his four seam, and the blue is his two seam. So the really impressive thing is it's pretty much all in the same place, movement-wise. It's not scattered where one's here, one's here. Since his movement's very consistent, I would guess his mechanics are very consistent as well. We looked at the two seam and four seam velocity before, they're about the same. And as you can tell, movement wise, they're very similar too. The two seam has is a little more inconsistent movement wise and has a little less run to it compared to the four seam. But they're right around the same area. Since these pitches are essentially the same, if the data holds up over time, like I said, there's only a 20 pitch bullpen, so there's not a ton of data to take away from this. But if this trend continues where the velocity is the same and the movement is the same, my suggestion would be picking one fastball, whatever you feel more comfortable with, the four seam or the two seam, and sticking with that pitch. The other option is if you really want two distinct fastballs, to make an adjustment so one is doing something different. Before making a change and getting rid of either your two seam or your four seam and just sticking with one pitch, I would do a couple of things. First, keep in mind this is a really small sample size, so you may want to see more data be before making such a decision. And keep in mind, technology and data in general is never going to be 100% reliable. I would get feedback on a pitch from your coach, catcher, players, teammates who have stepped in the box against you, opponents if you're friendly with them, umpires, see what they see from their perspective if the ball is moving differently, if your four seam and two seam are doing two different things. Also see how you feel. If you disagree with the rap soto and you think they are doing two different things and you're really confident in both pitches and feel there's situations where you'd like to throw a four seam and like to throw a two seam, if having those two pitches in your arsenal gives you a lot of confidence, then stick with it. Confidence is such a huge thing for pitchers. Rap soto is a tool and part of the equation. Weigh this with all the other information you have and then make a decision from that. The orange is the changeup. If you remember, the changeup was about three miles an hour difference in speed from the fastball. So while that's not the ideal range in difference speed-wise, 
The good thing, though, is the movement is different from his fastball. It's not just a fastball that's three miles an hour slower. So as you can see, the movement is a little more sync to it compared to the fastball, and also a little less run to it. His breaking ball is in the green, and he's getting downward vertical break and horizontal break. So it's a little bit of a slurvy pitch. He's getting more horizontal break than he is downward break, especially in these pitches over here. This pitch right here is equal amount of both. So it's kind of in that slurvy range. The movement of Hunter's breaking ball is doing the opposite of the movement of his fastball. So that's really good for tunneling purposes. If his breaking ball was plotting, like let's say a right-handed hand, a right -handed downward breaking curveball, and his fastball had a lot of run to it, maybe that wouldn't be the ideal pairing. If his fastball was really over the top and had a lot of vertical break and not a lot of horizontal break, and his breaking ball is slurvy like it is, it probably wouldn't pair well together. High riding fastballs pair with down breaking curveballs, and the fastballs with a lot of run to them pair really well with sliders. Hunter's fastball has equal amount of vertical and horizontal movement to it. It's usually referred to as the dead zone. That sounds really bad. At the upper levels, I think it's more of a big deal. So let me get into that a little bit. So typically at the upper levels, a pitcher would want to take advantage of either the ride on a fastball, a lot of vertical break, or a lot of run on his fastball, horizontal break. So the way to get out of the dead zone would be changing the spin direction on the ball. We'll talk about spin direction in a little bit. Now, to do that, that involves either changing your arm slot or changing your hand position, your wrist position. I think just working hard to increase velocity and command of your fastball are at this point far more important than changing the spin direction of the pitch. It may be something to look at later, but those things are very important now. I would hate to see a young pitcher try and you know, get out of the dead zone working with spin direction, and then it alters their mechanics and everything falls apart from there. So this is really a case-by-case -case basis. It's something to keep in mind. But like I said, I think you know, just working on velocity and command of your fastball are far more important at this point. Now we're going to leave the bullpen PDF report and go to Hunter's Rapsodo page on the cloud website. We're going to take a look at spin rate, power units, and spin efficiency and see how they all work together. I'm going to go to pitch types and highlight his fastballs. Now after these fastballs are highlighted, I'm going to sort them by total spin or highest spin rate. This fastball right here that was 70 miles an hour has a spin rate of 1,904 revolutions per minute. Spin rate actually has a higher correlation to swings and misses than fastball velocity. So just taking a look at Hunter's higher spin pitch, we see the number 1904, but what does that really mean? There's really no context for that. The major league average for a fastball is about 2,300 RPMs. So Hunter's RPMs come about 400 below the major league average, but the major league average fastball is also 93 miles an hour, compared to Hunter's fastball right here, which is thrown at 70 miles an hour. As velocity goes up, so does spin rate. As Hunter keeps throwing harder, he should see his spin increase. What if we want to look now at how good he is at spinning the fastball? Barry Unis is a great tool to control for a velocity and compare pitchers who throw at different speeds. Barry Unis is simple to calculate. It takes a total spin divided by velocity. We can take a look at this chart here in the top right. This is made by Simple Saber Metrics, which is a great YouTube page. I suggest everybody checking them out. They have a lot of great stuff on Rapsodo, pitch design, and just great material in general. So I suggest everybody check them out. This chart shows low, average, and high barrier units for fastball, breaking balls, and it doesn't show anything for change-ups. When it comes to spin rate, the hope is the spin is really high or really low. A high spin rate fastball will spin so much that it cuts through the air and fights gravity, so it'll stay up longer compared to a typical fastball. That'll give the fastball a ride and feel like it's exploding on the hitter. A low spin fastball will do the opposite. It'll spin less, so cut through the air less, and thus sink more. When it comes to spin rate, it's really good to be an outlier, be either really high or really low when it comes to spin. It's interesting the way a hitter's brain works. They're swinging not where the ball is, but where the brain thinks the ball is going to end up. With a high spin fastball, a hitter is likely to swing under it. With a low spin fastball, a hitter is likely to swing over it. That's why high spin fastballs work great up in the zone, and typically low spin fastballs work great down in the zone because they generate a lot of ground balls. Repsoda used to show barrier units on the bullpen report, but the new version, they don't do that. So I took Hunter's highest spin pitch, this one right here, the 1904, and divided by the velocity, 70.2. Went to my calculator, and that's 27.12. So his barrier units are 27 for that particular pitch. We go back to the Simple Saber Metrics barrier units chart, go to fastballs. High is 25.5, so 27 is well above high, which is great. So this shows, at least on this particular pitch, that Hunter has a very good ability to spin the ball. 
Barry units is a great way to compare different pitchers. You can compare someone like Hunter, who's throwing 70 miles an hour, to someone like Justin Verlander, who's throwing 95, and compare their abilities to spin a ball. So this is just one pitch. I wouldn't make any big judgments just based on one pitch. I would do this for all the fastballs and see where the numbers stand. If they hold up like they do, and Hunter shows to be a guy who's really good at generating spin rate, then attacking up in his zone may work well for him. Let's continue looking at this pitch as an example. So Barry Units tells us that this particular pitch had very high spin rate compared to his velocity. Now let's take a look at spin efficiency. Spin efficiency measures how well you're staying behind the ball. So a ball that's completely backspinning and had no cut to it would be 100% spin efficient. And what that means is if a pitch is 100% spin efficient, then all the spin is generating is causing movement. On this pitch here, Hunter's spin efficiency is 90.2. So he's getting only 90% out of this very good spin right here. That shows up in a true spin column right here. Just using this pitch as a blanket example, Hunter's showing a very good skill in generating spin, but he's only using 90% of that very good skill. Increasing spin efficiency means the movement increases. So these plots, these fastball plots, are going to go further away from the 0, zero center point. Having 100% spin efficiency is usually a good thing. Not all the time, it really depends on the pitcher, but I would say most of the time, you want to be 100% spin efficiency. So Hunter's 90% spin efficiency is telling me he's got a little bit of unwanted cut on the ball. Sometimes increasing spin efficiency just comes down to grip or simple cues like staying behind the ball. If someone wants to increase their spin efficiency and knows we aren't working, one of the things we have our guys do is throw a stripe ball like this. As you can see, this has electrical tape wrapped, wrapped around in a four seam grip. And just having catch with that will give you instant feedback whether you're staying behind the ball and it's being really spin efficient or you're getting some unwanted cut on the ball by getting on the side of the ball. If you have a catch and the line remains solid, then you're really staying behind the ball. If the line is wobbly, then you're getting that unwanted cut. Hunter spin efficiency is 90 to about 95%. That's pretty good. I would say very good is 95% and above. So he's just below that. You can see in this tool I'm using, this is from scout.texasleaguers.com backslash spin. This is a typical example of what your fastball is doing. It's about the same spin rate. Spin efficiency is in the 90 to 95% range. Tilt is at 120 p.m. So when you throw your fastball, this is what it looks like. I'll go really slow to give you a better idea of how it spins. So this is you at 90.8% spin efficiency. If we increase this to 100%, this is what it'll look like. As you can see, it's really not much of a big jump. Again, this is you throwing it at 90%. This is you at 95%, which is your highest. And this is where you can be at 100%. It's just really small adjustments that can get you staying behind the ball and up to 100% spin efficiency, which will lead to increased movement on the pitch. Hunter is almost there with a spin efficiency, just maybe these simple cues or simple adjustments can get him to 100%, and then he gets the most out of that really elite skill he has of spinning the baseball. While many pitchers have 100% spin efficient fastballs where they're generating complete backspin, even in the major leagues it's pretty rare to find a breaking ball that has 100% spin efficiency where it's top spin and a breaking ball. In the same way that fastball spin makes a pitch break vertically, breaking ball spin will make a pitch break down. So spin rate is very important for breaking balls. You can do the same thing to calculate barrel units. The scale is a little different with 28 to 30 being the average instead. We talked about spin direction. Imagine this was a clock. And as you can see, if the baseball was here and this is a clock, if it was completely an over top pitch, the spin direction would be 12 o'clock. If it was complete, Side spin, it would be spit from a right, you'd be spinning from the three o'clock range. Getting equal amount of vertical and horizontal break, like you were getting on some pitches, would be 130, which is right where this line would be. We talked about not changing your spin direction, but if we were, I'm just going to give you a little example of how we would go about doing that. So let's say you wanted more vertical break on your fastball. Changing the spin direction to one o'clock would just tilt the axis. The extreme would be 12. If you wanted more run on your pitch instead of vertical break, you would get the spin direction closer to three. So this would be extreme side spin, but your pitch is at 120. So more realistically, let's say we made it 150. As you can see, still majority side spin, but a little closer to what you were doing. For all the reasons I outlined, I wouldn't suggest doing this, but just giving you an idea, giving you an idea of what it's gonna look like. 
We flip it to 718 now. This is the spin direction of one of your curve bolts. If this was a clock, this is six o'clock. I'll show you six o'clock what it looks like. Your most downward breaking pitch was the 718 spin direction. You got up to 808 on spin direction as well. Let's take a look at 808. As you can see, it's starting to spin from around here as opposed to down here. And it's closer to side spin now as opposed to top spin. Say you wanted more side spin, you can try and increase that spin direction, move it up closer to nine o'clock. If nine o'clock was here, let's say we try and want to make it 845. And there you have almost complete side spin. So to break and bullet more side spin, we'll plot in this area, more to the left. If you change the spin direction closer to six o'clock, it would have more downward break on it, plot a little further down. This example is used with 100% spin efficiency, just to give you a better idea of what the spin will look like. Like I said, most breaking balls aren't thrown at 100% spin efficiency. Your highest spin efficiency was 85%. And spin direction was 744. So this is what that pitch looks like. Just to show you the difference, if it was 100% spin efficiency, it would be spinning like this. 85% is really good for a breaking ball. If you weren't getting so over the top of it and getting on the side of it a little more, you'd have more gyro spin to it. And the further you go, you eventually end up with that bullet spin. Overall, Hunter, you're doing a lot of really nice things. Your spin rate in your fastball is very good. Your spin efficiency is pretty good in that 90 to 95% range, but you're only taking advantage of your really good skill 90 to 95%. You can improve, even though you're pretty good at spin efficiency, you can get excellent at it, get up to 100%, and then take full advantage of your elite spin rate. We talked about using a stripe ball to do this. You can also use some high speed video. It doesn't have to be anything crazy expensive like an Edutronic or Sony RX camera. It can be something simple like your iPhone in slow motion. Get it as close as you can to the release point, and then you can get a good idea of how the ball is coming off your fingers. We talked about your two-seam and four-seam, how they're similar. I think maybe get a little more information, see how you feel, get some feedback from people you trust, and then make a decision. Also, the separation in speed between your fastball and changeup is about three to five miles per hour. Creating a bigger speed differential will likely help you keep hitters off balance. Once again, this isn't something you can strictly look at the numbers and say, I want to get to 10 miles an hour or seven miles an hour is the perfect number. You need that feedback from hitters. You need that feedback from your catcher, coaches, just like we talked about the four-seam and two-seam. Rapsodo, this is one piece of data. This is one part of the puzzle. So judge that accordingly. And then, um, you know, see how batters react to your changeup is probably the most important thing. If you're trying to kill some speed on your changeup, there's a lot of things you can do. It's a lot of trial and error. The changeup is a feel pitch, so it's going to take time to find out what works exactly well for you. So just experiment with different grips, different cues. But most importantly, keep in mind, you want to throw the changeup with the same arm speed as the fastball. Long tossing your changeup is a great way to reinforce throwing your changeup with the same arm speed as your fastball. So great stuff, Hunter. Thank you for doing this. Thank you to Coach Sapir. Thank you guys for having me down to do the rap soda with you guys. I'm always have a great time when I come down. Wish the best of luck to you, Hunter, and the Phillipsburg State Liners this year.